policy parlor event here in Brussels. What do you think of the event and what was missing from the debate? Mm. I like the event. I like particularly the accent on policy, policies, the real world. Uh, I like the event because uh, Atta is an old friend, you know, and what, all the things that I know about uh, the Arabic uh, world, uh, 95% come from him. This is, has been my, my teacher. Uh, and I think that one of the things that he taught me is that uh, the situation in the Palestine, in the Arabic world, is so complex and it's becoming more and more complex that uh, you need a approaches which are not traditional. This is not a, an easy situation. So I think that very clearly, I believe that traditional philanthropy does not work. Uh, Arthur said one thing which is very important during his presentation. He said we have to help uh, the civil society. Civil society on the ground, you know, in, in the place. You, you cannot export anything, you know, because uh, there are two different worlds. And uh, the question is, how? How can we help the civil society? Uh, uh, several times we said, uh, you know, if we build a school, is very important, it's uh, part of the traditional philanthropy. But here, I think that uh, what we need is to build a, a class of teachers. Uh, how can we help? How can we create civil society? And this was the question. And my question to uh, Arthur uh, now is, okay, where do we start from? What type of civil society? I know that, of course, every country will give a, a different answer. But uh, where should we start from and how? Uh, because it's very nice to, to help uh, small entrepreneurs uh, in uh, Morocco, Tunisia, etc. That's fine. With all the difficulties, of course, that you mentioned. But the question is how? Where do we start? What, what would be your first recommendation? And this is what, in my opinion, was missing in the, in the discussion. You know, I'm glad that you are asking the, the how to do, because really this is the crux of the matter, because we agree uh, what we want to achieve. So I think uh, the values in approaching uh, the, the issue would be we should strengthen the local context. So whatever you, coming from Italy, you try to support, whatever you know in Italy is not automatically applicable in, 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 the, in the Arab uh, region. So local context is important. The second part is that we should avoid at all costs making the local NGOs that work with you becoming a contractor for you because okay. this is really where things uh, can go wrong. Uh, we should help them to be the owners of the agenda. But that requires that they don't only put out their money for you to give them money and then implement a program. If they have, if they have to lead, if we want them to lead the agenda, they have to earn it. And in a way, they need to be lobbying for support in their own community for what you are uh, trying to do. So your help will be, other than the programmatic, to make them reach that point before rushing to implement certain programs. I, un I understand. But my question at that is, how? The, the how is you need patience. You need to, to put the, uh, the agreement between the two entities, what you are trying to achieve, put down what you are trying to contribute, and they have to put down on the table their contribution, including lobbying, as we heard today, that it's important to have the corporate sector, you know, the local philanthropy, behind their activities. Um, and this is a weakness in most foreign money coming into a region. Governments ban them. It would be much easier to implement programs if, uh, uh, if there's local money coming from local sources. I understand. For resources. Let me ask you another question. During your presentation, you mentioned cooperation. And you know how much uh, you know, I believe yeah, I know. in cooperation. 
we, we did also, we yeah. had a group, you know, working on cooperation. Uh, and I think that still is a very important element. But another point is, don't you think that we should uh, uh, join forces with the political uh, institutions starting from the uh, European community. European community doesn't seem to have a policy, a clear policy, a clear policy. Don't you think that it would be important to join forces with them and clarify an agenda and agreeing on an agenda? Uh, I mean, if we want to strengthen cooperation between Northern Africa, Eastern Mediterranean and Europe, uh, Working with the government is essential. Uh, eventually, no matter how much resources we have, is very incremental compared to the needs and compared to what the government said. So it's important you work on your side to influencing them on what is agreed upon and the Arab NGOs that are partners to work on their side so that uh, in totality we will be lobbying for government money to go into social issues that we care, care about. But don't, you think, but don't you think that each foundation uh, tends to, with the exception, you know, we heard uh, this afternoon about a group of foundations working together, but still you are talking about five or six foundations. Yeah. You don't have the totality, you know, the foundation. You don't have a uh, European Foundation Center becoming the flag of philanthropy, of European philanthropy, and also yeah. having the power, you know, of, uh, of, of talking with the European community, with the governments, don't you think that they should be pursued? They should. Uh, I mean, this is one of the weaknesses of our sector, the fragmentation. If traditional models of philanthropy are not working in the Arab region, uh, the question naturally then is why? Why do you think that is? You know, the, the, for one, we went back and f uh, we went, we regressed a lot in the Arab region. You know, before 100 years, and the 100 years before that, we had uh, vibrant endowments in the region dealing with social uh, issues, whether it's schooling, health, you know, identical to what you have in Europe. But uh, unfortunately, since the 1940s, with the new regimes coming in place, there has been unfavorable laws on endowments to the point where these endowments have been taken over by these governments, and not only taken over, but also new ones have been in inhibited. So in that sense, traditional philanthropy uh, has suffered a huge setback. So what I'm trying to push in our region to discuss, rediscover, get re-educated on the vibrant philanthropy we had prior to 1900. Learn from that, but it will never be the same in the year 2014. We need to be interacting with the rest of the world and get influenced and pick up the good things from other regions and impose it on traditionally what we do to improve it. And that applies to all regions, by the way. And there are efforts, similar efforts happening in Africa, similar efforts happening in Latin America. And today my question was, is Europe uh, homogeneous in its philanthropy? Um, uh, I'm asking the question I know, no. But how every country in Europe is discovering its own discourse so that there is a learning experience between countries rather than cut and paste of one model in all the countries that we know it will never be applicable if applied as is. So, so it is what we are doing in the Arab region, looking at our heritage and culture, learning from it, learning from other regions and coming with a modified one. If every region does something similar, we will be building a very rich global philanthropy.